Sir, are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> So I think we can take off. Yes. All right. So uh, let me thank the organizers, the tech team. Very impressive, very perfect coordination for their kind invitation and for everything. So the title of my talk. Uh, is looking for a theory of quantum gravity. In this talk, I am going to explore and discuss the basic points about the so-called theory of quantum gravity. In fact, quantum gravity is one of the most fundamental questions that is confronting physics today. So, in order to understand how do we think about this theory of quantum gravity, what it is, we have to look for it, in what manner to understand it. We need to understand a few basic concepts. You see, the universe was born something like 13.7 billion years ago and the fundamental laws of nature were also born right at that time. And we are trying to understand some of them uh, even today. So we have at our hand two most fundamental theories of nature that have been experimentally verified up to several digits very very accurately. So you can see the most accurate theory or one of the most accurate theories of nature. One of them is the quantum theory. And the other one is the theory of general relativity, which is the classical theory of gravity. Now, about the quantum theory, quantum theory describes the laws of microcosmos, the laws of universe inside the atom. Now, in special relativity, we have the equivalence of mass and energy. And in quantum mechanics, we have the possibility of creating energy out of vacuum, which is not empty, but it's a boiling soup of particles being created and destroyed. This very property of quantum mechanics, along with special theory of relativity, makes it possible to construct a theory which is relativistically invariant quantum field theory and this theory which is summarized in the so-called standard model it describes the quantization of the three fundamental forces of nature the strong and weak nuclear forces and the electromagnetic force and this theory has been verified experimentally very accurately to several digits and most of its predictions have come out to be true. So, the, the main outcome of this theory can be summarized in one line that we have six quarks and six leptons at our ends, which are the spin one of fermions, and the gauge bosons, which are vector gauge bosons, vector particles. They are the mediators of the force. So, even though it's a very, very successful theory, but it does not include gravity because gravitational interaction is much, much weaker. Even though it's most obvious uh, law of nature, I drop something from here, it goes to the ground. It's so obvious, but it is the weakest of all the four fundamental forces of nature. So my conventional quantum field theory or the standard model does not include gravity in its description and it is described by a so-called flat matter. Now, let us talk about classical theory of gravity, the general relativity. This theory actually, it describes the law of cosmos, 
in contrast to the laws of microcosmos that are described by quantum theory. General relativity describes laws of cosmos, physics at large distance, physics of the universe, physics of the solar system, physics of the galaxies, physics of the black holes, white holes, neutron stars, boson stars, warm holes, time travel, and what not. And very, very accurately. So let me just mention that around the year 1845, very crucial, a French astronomer, Le Verrier, he measured the advance of perihelion of Mercury. Our Mercury is the planet closest to our sun. It revolves in around 88 days or something like this. So when it comes back to its original point, its uh, major axis of the ellipse gets rotated by a small angle which is called as the advance of perihelion. Okay. So this was measured by the French astronomer in around 1845 and the general theory of relativity was born exactly 70 years later in 1915. So the general relativity got experimentally verified 70 years before its birth. And so accurately the advance of perihelion of Mercury comes out to be 43 arc seconds per century experimentally as well as theoretically. You see, such a beautiful theory. Then subsequently there are several tests of general relativity and almost each one of you might have heard of or you would know the gravitational waves, detection of gravitational waves. When two compact objects like two black holes in a binary system, they merge together, the gravity, they emit radiation, gravitational radiation, which is which are gravitational waves. So they have been detected at the LIGO experiment. Then construction of the image of a black hole, a super massive black hole, not in our galaxy, but sitting in another very distant galaxy called as M87. This guy, super massive black hole, is so uh, big, I mean, its diameter goes into several uh, billion kilometers. Okay, super, super massive black hole. But we don't need to worry, it's far off from us. Uh, and so, this is being the this particular black hole, the image of this black hole has been constructed using the event horizon telescopes. Uh, which consists of a network of eight, uh, eight telescopes spread across our world, our earth and the earth. And it, it's a beautiful thing, it was in the newspapers uh, uh, headlines just some years ago. And most recent one is again more based on the measurement of the advance of perihelion, but now not of Mercury, but of another star called as S2. So within our own galaxy, Penrose and others, this recent novel in 2020, they predicted that there is a super massive black hole existing at the center of our Milky Way galaxy. This particular location is called as Sagittarius A star. Several, is again a super massive black hole, several objects revolve around it. So you choose, you can choose a particular one. So this, uh, Physics Nobel laureate woman, Nobel laureate, Andrea Gage. Andrea Gage. She uh, experimentally tracked the orbit of a particular star called S2, and this star takes about 16 years to make one revolution around this supermassive black hole. And so you can see that again, when you start measuring at the point of perihelion, which is the closest point when this object is closest to its uh, uh, to the to the main uh, supermassive black hole, and then when it comes back after one revolution, this major axis gets rotated slightly, as I explained for Mercury. So, what is theoretically predicted and what is experimentally discovered now? This brave soul, woman Andrea Gies, she measured it, tracked it for sixteen years, and that the two theoretical prediction and the experimental measurement, they again vary perfectly up to arc seconds. Okay. So, I mean, this is a super great test of general relativity. So, general relativity, you see, is so successful. 
then you might wonder then why do you worry about theory of quantum gravity this is classical gravity is so successful yes but there are several points several places here it is still does not work and we have to think beyond that okay so that's the point now let me just point out a few things so main question is that of the singularities singularity the best well known singularity we have mentioned black hole couple of times the space time singularity is black hole then even inside the black holes there are singularities uh, one of the uh, best well known singularities is the big bang so if we run the universe backwards in time eventually we hit upon after 13.7 billion years we will hit upon a point a singularity which is called as the big bang from where the universe originated now your classical theory of relativity can explain things perfectly well a little bit before you hit the singularity at big bang so at that point the planckian scales planckian length planckian time planckian energies mass and so on you can construct these three fundamental uh, objects out of the three other fundamental well known constants constants planck's constant newton's constant and velocity of light or the some universal velocity so out of these three you construct planckian mass planckian mass and energy is the same time and length and prior to hitting this big bang singularity you can describe things perfectly well within the framework of our classical theory of gravity called general relativity 